The 2017 Giro d'Italia is the 100th edition of the Italian Grand Tour, and in celebration of the race's historic centenary, the organisers have designed the route to visit as many of the country's regions as possible. The race starts with three stages on the Mediterranean island of Sardinia before it heads towards mainland Italy. The first day is a slightly lumpy 203km route from Algaro to Olbia and should see a sprint across the line to take the first pink jersey of the race. The second stage could then produce the race's second overall leader in as many days, as the more testing terrain covering the 208 kilometres to Tortoli may prove too tough for the pure fast men. For the race's final day on Sardinia, the riders are set to cover 148 kilometres to Cagliari, and barring a huge surprise, this stage will end in a bunch sprint. To allow for the additional travel time back to the mainland, the first rest day comes after just three race stages, but the race picks up again with intent on stage four. The summit finish on Mount Etna should bring the overall contenders to the front to at least mark one another, if not attack, and create a time gap on their rivals at this early point in the race. The next day starts lumpy but ends flat, so the whole peloton should be together at the end of the 175 kilometres into Messina. This is Vincenzo Nibali's hometown, and with ambitions for the overall win, he may want to have taken the pink jersey ahead of this homecoming. Two long stages continue the parade around Italy for the second of the race's six summit finishes on stage nine. At just 139 kilometres long, finishing atop the blockhouse climb, the GC contenders can fight it out on the mountain slope, safe in the knowledge that whoever ends the day in the pink jersey has a rest day straight after to recover and plan their approach to the remaining stages. Immediately out of the rest day is the first of the Giro's two individual time trials. Some riders cope less well with rest days than others, and if anyone's suffering, this 39.2 kilometre test against the clock will lay their weaknesses bare. Rolling with a drag up to the finish line, this will suit the time trial specialists more than the climbers. The stages leading up to the next rest day vary between those featuring categorised climbs and long, flat, transitional stages. Although every stage has the capacity to cause an upset, it's week three of the 2017 Giro where the race is most likely to be won or lost. This was the case in 2016 when Steven Kruisvik crashed out of contention and Nibali overturned a four-minute deficit in the closing stages. The route of the 100th edition looks even more likely to bring exciting racing. Stage 16 is the start of five brutal days in the mountains. After taking a brief visit into Switzerland, the day features 5,400 metres of elevation and features the Mortirolo and iconic Stelvio climbs, the latter climb from two sides. The peloton then has a long descent into Bormio to finish, which could either increase or wipe out any time gaps gained on the climbs. Stage 18 is another tough parkour, with the riders having to cross five categorised mountains in its 137 kilometres, before the race's final climb appears on stage 20 to Fosa, which is the last chance for climbers to take any advantage. Rather than the standard processional sprint stage to end the Giro, the final stage is a time trial which instead sets the riders against the clock across 28 kilometres into Milan. The final day time trial was enough for rider Heijerdal to snatch the win from Joaquin Rodriguez in 2012. And if enough riders have stuck together in the mountains, a similar upset could be on the cards in 2017.